Today we're going to talk about uh, psychotropic medications. We're going to talk about pharmaceuticals. Uh, I know we talk about, uh, well, the, the whole class is about drug abuse, uh, but uh, this is, has to do with uh, the medications that you would be using if you uh, were able to prescribe uh, medications. Uh, so when you hear a, a client or uh, someone telling you about the medications that they're taking, uh, this will give you um, a little bit of information about uh, what those pharmaceuticals might be. Uh, one of the things that we need to remember is that uh, pharmaceuticals are constantly changing. They're evolving. Uh, we're getting uh, better and better uh, forms of these medications, and they always change the name. And, and so some of the, the – these are pretty much just the generics uh, that are out there. Uh, from the past. Um, this this uh, lecture was probably written five or six years ago. Uh, in five or six years, everything can change. Uh, so this is uh, what was on the market about five or six mar uh, years ago. Um, and it was just covering the, uh, the uh, most popular drugs. So that's what we're going to cover today. That's what we're going to talk about today. If I can get it started, there we go. Okay, psychotropic medications. Uh, the mechanism of action, uh, selective serotonin. We're, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, selective serotonin uh, antidepressants, uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors inhibit serotonin reuptake uh, so that they increase synaptic serotonin levels. Many SSRIs affect uh, other receptors, especially at high doses. Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors uh, clinical effect uh, usually take weeks so that the mechanism goes beyond simply increasing synaptic uh, serotonin levels. There are several serotonin uh, receptor subtypes. Uh, serotonin receptors are located throughout the body, especially in the GI tract. All SSRIs uh, except Luvox are FDA approved to treat depression, a major depressive disorder, and dysthymia. What was dysthymia? Now we don't call it that. We call it prevalent uh, depres depressive uh, disorder. Uh, so dysthymia is out, and persistent uh, depressive disorder is, is in. Various class members of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are also approved to treat generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, panic disorder, PTSD, eating disorders, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and social anxiety disorder. Uh, Off-label uses, uh, they, they also use it for ADHD, insomnia, chronic pain syndromes, seasonal affective disorder, behavioral problems in, uh, in individuals with dementia, and intellectual disabilities. Uh, the half-life of uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressants, uh, the, uh, the short half-life um, would be uh, Paxil and Luvox are the short ones. They have a short half-life. So if you miss a dose, uh, it is almost uh, uh, instantaneous that you start uh, feeling the effects. Uh, the moderate half-life, uh, Zoloft, Selexa, and Lexapro. Uh, the long uh, half-life uh, is Prozac, and that's one of the reasons why Prozac is so readily um, prescribed, because if you miss a dose, uh, it takes a while before you start feeling the effects of missing a dose. Side effects of uh, SSRIs, uh, decreased sex drive and impaired sexual function tend not to resolve with time. Uh, nausea, diarrhea, anorexia, and vomiting, all of these increase with dose and, and can re be resolved with time. Uh, weight gain, especially Paxil, uh, also known as paroxetine, uh, after initial uh, uh, gastrointestinal effects. Uh, headaches, dizziness, anxiety, especially Prozac. Uh, rash, insomnia, sedation, sweating, vivid dreams, tremor, dry mouth, especially Paxil, uh, bruising, increased uh, prolactin, pro uh, the protein that enables uh, females to produce milk. 
and uh, that is kind of interesting. So um, potentially, if a woman takes uh, SSRIs, uh, she might her her uh, nipples start may start uh, leaking milk. Drug-to-drug -drug interactions, uh, Luvox increases Prozac, increases Paxil, increases Zoloft, increases Celexa, increases Lexapro. In other words, don't take more than one SSRIs at the same time. Uh, the interacting effects may uh, be uh, dose-dependent, and that is Zoloft. Uh, SSRIs uh, levels uh, tend to be altered by other drugs, but can potentially increase levels. Uh, it may inhabit, inhibit the metabolism of certain drugs. For example, Paxil increases risperidone, which is an antipsychotic. Uh, Prozac increases buspirone, which is an anxiolytic. And Luvox increases olanzapine, which is an antipsychotic. Caution, suicidal ideation and increased suicide risk, especially with children early in treatment, but there is significant debate as to whether this is, uh, is true. Uh, serotonin uh, syndrome, SSRIs plus MAOIs, possibly lithium and others, uh, causes diarrhea, tremor, uh, sweating, restlessness, hyperreflexivia, re reflexia, <laughs> leads to progression of symptoms if untreated, and then uh, the individual becomes disorient, uh, disoriented, uh, rigid, uh, fever leads to coma, seizures lead to death, approximately 10% mortality rate with serotonin syndrome. So never mix SSRIs and MAOIs. Uh, be very careful as to what uh, other drugs an individual is taking, uh, especially a, uh, an antipsychotic. Many medication substances have serotonin uh, activity. Dextromethorphan, which is a, a cough medicine, has uh, increases your serotonin level. Uh, fentanyl, which is an opioid, increases your serotonin level. Meperidine, it's an opioid commonly called Demerol, uh, increases your serotonin level. Somatriptan, uh, which is a migraine uh, headache medication, uh, increases serotonin. St. John's wort, which is an herbal antidepressant, uh, and MDMA ecstasy, of course, uh, LSD, uh, and lots of, uh, lots of uh, illegal drugs uh, increase the serotonin level. Selexa, uh, few drug, uh, drug interactions, uh, high serotonin specificity, uh, it's typical or uh, less SSRI uh, side effects. Uh, Lexapro, no generic available. Uh, it's, a, it's simple dosing. Uh, this is a uh, Lexapro is very common. They use it for uh, women going through menopause uh, uh, because of the uh, depressive uh, aspect of, uh, of uh, menopause. Uh, fluoxetine, Prozac, um, Seraphim, uh, symbi Symbiax with Zyprexa uh, has a very long half-life. Uh, this is fluoxetine is the uh, is a chemical name for Prozac. Uh, significant drug-to-drug -drug interaction, and so you need to be careful uh, if you're taking Prozac uh, because Prozac stays in your system for an extended length of time. Uh, fluoxamine or Luvox, uh, it is indicated for uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, has multiple significant drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Uh, paroxetine, uh, also known as Paxil, has a significant drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Uh, some reports of associated weight gain, uh, withdrawal symptoms with missed doses. Uh, Seratiline, uh, Zoloft, uh, moderate to drug drug-to-drug -drug interactions, multi-step multi, uh, dosing. Uh, they use Zoloft uh, for um, postpartum depression, um, and they, yeah, anyway, they use it for postpartum depression. Uh, newer antidepressants that are not less uh, uh, serotonin specific or affect serotonin differently than SSRIs. Uh, 1981, they came up with Desiril, which is also known as Trazodone. Uh, Desiril is used for PTSD. Uh, 1989, Wellbutrin, Europion, which increases your, now we're going to talk about this, 
it increases your serotonin level without, uh, actually it doesn't increase your serotonin level, but it, it reduces your depression. Effexor, uh, Vinlaz, uh, f Fazine, uh was invented in 1993 or it was developed in 1993, uh, or it came on the market actually in 1993. Serzone, uh, Nefazidone, uh, 1994. Rimeron, uh, Mirtazapine, uh, 1996. Uh, Serzone uh, was discontinued in 2004. Uh, there are generics out there that are available, but most of them are not in the United States. Uh, 2004, Cymbalta was, uh, was developed, or was put on the market. Effexor and Cymbalta are both serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs. Uh, Rimeron has serotonin subtype and norepinephrine activity. Uh, trazodone and nefazodone uh, have uh, different serotonin activity than SSRIs. Bupropion has uh, dopamine and norepinephrine activity, and this is the reason why Wellbutrin is used uh, for individuals who are having uh, sexual side effects. Uh, this increases your dopamine and norepinephrine level, but not your serotonin level. Uh, serotonin, of course, uh, controls your sex drive in your hypothalamus. Uh, so if you increase your serotonin level, a lot of times it decre decreases, it, it lowers your sex drive, and, and a lot of people don't like that. Um, indications and off-label uses, all uh, typical and atypical antidepressants have FDA approval to treat depression. Uh, SNRIs have been shown to be effective in chronic neuropathic pain. Uh, Wellbutrin has been approved to treat nicotine addiction. Wellbutrin can augment SSRIs to reduce SSRI sexual side effects. Uh, Rimeron and Trazodone are used to treat insomnia. Both uh, atypical antidepressants have many similar uses uh, to typical SSRIs. Wellbutrin, Rimeron, Trazodone, and Nefazodone uh, do not usually have associated sexual dysfunction. And for that reason, uh, some people are would rather use those. Uh, trazodone does have a problem. Trazodone, um, people feel uh, drugged when they take Trazodone. And the reason is because they don't get, uh, th their sleep isn't as uh, complete as it could be uh, because uh, trazodone makes them jump over um, the first uh, uh, delta wave sleep cycle. Uh, that's what, uh, that's the reason they use it for PTSD. Um, and uh, the people feel tired. People that take it uh, tend to feel tired a lot. Uh, Effexor is uh, similar to tricyclics with less safety and side effect concerns. Effexor has FDA approval for depression and generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety disorder. Uh, as an SNRI, Effexor activity depends on dose. Effexor has a minimal drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Effexor has side effects uh, with missed doses. Uh, Cymbalta uh, is an SNRI that it has uh, minimal dose dependency. Cymbalta is indicated for depression and chronic neuropathic pain. Wellbutrin, or uh, also known as Zyban, when it's used uh, for nicotine uh, control. Uh, bupropion is a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Uh, Zyban is used to treat smoking addiction. Bupropion is a seizure risk in certain patients. Uh, it has uh, the higher the dose, the the the, the more uh, risk that you're taking. Eupropion's drug-to-drug uh, -drug interactions are not often significant, except with uh, MAOIs, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Rimeron, mirtazapine, uh, is a complex serotonin uh, that has norepinephrine alpha two and histamine activity. Mirtazapine uh, has receptor activity, changes with uh, changes in dose. Mirtazapine has sedation and weight gain, especially at lower dose. Mirtazapine usage uh, can have lipid abnormalities. Uh, it increases your lipid uh, level, which is not good, especially your LDL, your bad cholesterol. 
Uh, Rimuron has minimal drug-to-drug -drug interactions except with MAOIs. Uh, Serzone, uh, Nefazodone is uh, rarely used to, to, uh, due to irreversible liver toxicity. Uh, Nefazodone was uh, pulled from the market by initial manufacturer in 2004, although it is still available as a generic, and it's especially uh, available in uh, Europe and Canada. Nefazodone is still popular with some patients. Uh, trazodone, or Desiril, uh, causes sedation, uh, weight gain, low blood pressure. Uh, trazodone is used most commonly off-label for insomnia. Uh, rare reports of su uh, sustained painful erection, priapism, uh, that should be treated in the emergency room, of course. It can lead to impotence. Uh, it can do damage to your uh, circulation and your uh, in your penis. It has been reported, it has been reported with trazodone, priapism. Uh, tricyclic antidepressants describe a group of drugs with similar structure and function. Uh, tricyclics, uh, in 1958, imipramine uh, failed investigation as an antipsychotic, but was found to have antidepressant pop properties. We didn't have an antidepressant uh, before 1958. Uh, well, we had monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Uh, so the tricyclics came out about the same time as the MAOIs. Uh, 1960s, multiple uh, other TCAs uh, developed and placed into use. Uh, 1990s, significant reduction in use due to introduction of SSRIs, uh, which had have fewer side effects. When I first started in medicine, uh, if somebody was depressed and we were treating them, Usually, we were treating them with uh, with uh, tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, amipramine, disipramine, uh, nortriptyline, uh, amitriptyline. There, yeah, there were there were just a bunch of them. Um, really hard to to uh, to measure uh, the the tricyclics, or at least it was back then. I, I guess it's a little easier now. The mechanism of tricyclic antidepressant action, uh, there is uh, norepinephrine, serotonin, histamine, muscarinic, uh, and uh, alpha adrenergic uh, receptor activity in differing ratios. Uh, anticholinergic activity leads to many of the side effects of these drugs. It is used for depression and similar spectrum of, of disorders as SSRIs. Um, tricyclics are especially helpful with chronic pain and depression, secondary to medical conditions such as AIDS. Side effects include enuresis, uh, narcolepsy, uh, premature ejaculation, insomnia, and migraine prophylaxis. Uh, blood may be obtained to monitor dose effectiveness, and this is what we did uh, when I first started in medicine, was working in the lab. And if we had somebody that uh, was taking tricyclics, we would have to draw their blood and uh, fire up the uh, uh, the gas chromatography uh, machine uh, to measure it. Always dangerous. Drug-to-drug uh, -drug interactions from tri tricyclics. Uh, uh, tricyclics have uh, multiple significant interactions in each direction with potentially serious consequences. The side effects of uh, uh, tricyclics for anticholinergic anti uh, anti problems include dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and urinary retention, cardiac arrhythmias and conduction uh, changes, orthostatic hypotension, uh, sedation, and weight gain. Cautions when taking tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, overdose is frequently fatal, uh, so you have to be very uh, cognizant of how much you're taking and, and uh, whether it's building up in your body. Uh, patients with bipolar disorder may be pushed into mania or rapid cycling, and this is a problem. This is one of the reasons why we try not to give tricyclics to uh, people that are suffering from bipolar disorder. Amitriptyline or Elevil is uh, low in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has high anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine, and it's high in pain control. Amitriptyline is used to manage major depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, migraine headaches, and neuropathic pain. 
It's used to treat OCD, depressive disorders, panic attacks, and anxiety, amitriptyline. The cipramine uh, or norpramine is uh, high in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has low anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine and low in pain control. The cipramine is used as an antidepressant and to treat ADHD. Doxepin or Sinequan is uh, low in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has uh, moderate anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine and low in pain control. Doxepin is used to treat major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders, chronic hives, and insomnia. Amipramine or Tofranil is low in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has moderate anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine and moderate in pain control. It's used to, to, to treat uh, depression, uh, anxiety, and uh, uh, panic disorders and enuresis. Okay, uh, Sinequan, uh, we never came across, so it's a, it's a relatively new tricyclic. The cipramine and uh, uh, amitriptyline uh, is uh, it's something that we, uh, we had back in the 70s. Uh, ascendin, amoxapine, is high in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. Uh, it uh, has moderate anticholinergic effects and low in pain control. Amoxapine uh, works as an antidepressant rapidly in about one to two weeks, whereas uh, SSRIs take uh, six to eight weeks, uh, and it has been used as an antipsychotic. Uh, clomipramine or anaphranil is uh, low in norepinephrine activity, high in serotonin activity. Uh, it has uh, high anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine and high in pain control. Uh, Ascendin uh, is, is relatively new. It's uh, new since the 70s when we were, when I was uh, first started in medicine. Uh, Ludamil is high in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. Uh, it has uh, low cholinergic effects and moderate in pain control. Metroptoline is uh, used to treat depression, anxiety, panic disorder, and neuropathic pain. Nortriptyline, it's an it's, that's an old one. Uh, or Pamelor is moderate in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has moderate anticholinergic effects and moderate in pain control. Uh, nortriptyline is used to treat depression, anxiety, ADHD, neuropathic pain, and to help in smoking cessation. Uh, vivactyl or uh, protriptyline is high in norepinephrine activity, uh, low in serotonin activity. It has moderate anticholinergic effects and low in pain control. Protriptyline is used to treat depression, uh, ADHD, and its energizing effect is used to treat narcolepsy. Uh, Trimipramine, Sermontil, is a low in norepinephrine activity, low in serotonin activity. It has high anticholinergic effects and high in pain control. Trimipramine is used to treat depression. Uh, anxiety disorder, psychosis, and uh, insomnia. Vivactyl is relatively new, but trimipramine is old. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, doing this lecture so that you memorize all of these things. I just want you to be aware that they do exist. I want you to know that tricyclics were used for depression. SSRIs, of course, are what we are using now. Uh, we're also using SNRIs uh, from time to time. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors were the first antidepressant that we discovered. Uh, then we discovered tricyclics. Uh, they switched really quick to tricyclics because monoamine oxidase inhibitors uh, have, have uh, uh, some really serious side effects. Um, and and I'm, I just want you to be aware of these things. And, and of course, if you're uh, watching a commercial on television and they're talking about Cymbalta or they're talking about Effexor or they're talking about Luvox, uh, then probably they talk about uh, don't take this with an MAOI. This is what they're talking about. 
and I'm going to explain to you why you can't take anything with an MAOI <laughs> because there may, may be a drug interaction. But I just want you to be aware that these drugs exist. I want you to, to have heard the uh, the names if you if you come across, uh, like I said, a patient uh, or a, a client that comes in and uh, you ask them what they're, they've been taking and they say, well, I've uh, been taking Zoloft or I've been taking Paxil uh, or I've been taking Amipramine, uh, then you at least have an idea what uh, the drug is. Amipramine, of course, is a tricyclic. Uh, you probably, they probably won't be taking an MAOI. This is pretty old stuff and uh, most me uh, physicians stay away from this. However, comma, Sometimes people do not uh, react to uh, the other antidepressants that, that they're giving you, so you have to give them something that actually takes care of their depression, and, and that is sometimes MAOIs. And this is one of the reasons why we need to talk about these things. You don't want to make that mistake, because if they take MAOIs with something else, it could kill them. If they take uh, MAOIs with, with a... Uh, an herbal medication, it could potentially uh, be fatal. So th the reason I, I'm giving you all of these things is is because uh, just to make you aware that they do exist and uh, to give you some of the ideas uh, of what the pharmaceuticals uh, are all about. So that if you hear about them in the in the future, uh, then you will you will uh, understand what's going on. Monoamine oxidase. Inhibitors abbreviated as MAOIs in 1952. The first MAOI uh, found with antidepressant properties and process looking for an anti-tuberculosis uh, drug. The MAOIs were developed. So it's serendipitous. They were looking for one drug and they found one that actually worked on depression. So they're looking for a tuberculosis medication. They found an antidepressant. 1962, investigation of a death from hypertensive crisis from someone ingesting uh, uh, tyramine rich food while taking an MAOI. So you can't eat select foods with MAOIs. It took them 10 years to figure this out, um, which is kind of interesting. But then again, uh, uh, from 1952 to 1962, there weren't as many processed foods. What, what we're talking about with tyramine is processed foods. Uh, so, and we'll talk about that in just a second. In the 1960s, an institution of strict dietary restriction of tyramine-containing foods and other interacting substances. That was in the 1960s. And then also in the 1960s, significant reduction in use due to introduction of tricyclic antidepressants, which do not have the severe restrictions of MAOIs. The problem with uh, MAOIs is that... Uh, these tyramine-rich foods, you're not really, they don't talk about tyramine very much. Um, it, it's not on the label uh, because most people aren't taking monoamine oxidase inhibitors. But as soon as they could replace uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors with something, and in this case it was tricyclics, uh, they pretty much uh, stopped using it because uh, people were eating a hot dog and, and uh, they were having a uh, hypertensive crisis. And sometimes they died. They would uh, put an olive in uh, in a martini, uh, and you know uh, you can't eat olives uh, with uh, while taking MAOIs. So this person ended up dead. Uh, real serious stuff. Uh, 2006, the transdermal celluline uh, patch MSAM uh, was uh, invented to treat depression, and it is an MAOI. So this is uh, one of the things. So, I mean, that was only uh, 15 years ago. Uh, they, they developed this MSAM, which is a, a, a patch that you wear rather than taking a pill. The features of MAOIs. MAOIs are an effective antidepressant for those who can adhere to the necessary restrictions and tolerate many of the side effects. Uh, very long duration and requiring caution when mixing with restricted substances or medications. So the reality is, if you're taking an MAOI, you pretty much have to stay away from just about everything, including select foods. Tyramine-containing foods, uh, this is not a complete list, but this is just some of the things that you have to stay away from. Uh, you can uh, eat certain tyramines because they don't have 
that much of the chemicals that create the problem. Uh, many cheeses have tyr are, uh, have uh, tyramines. Uh, you can't eat chocolates. You can't eat soybeans. So no so soy sauce. Uh, hot dogs, uh, dry sausage, any kind of uh, processed meat uh, you can't eat. Uh, you can't consume caffeine. Uh, so that means no coffee, no pop. Uh, beer is a processed food. So you can't uh, drink beer, you can't drink wine, you can't eat pickles, and you can't eat olives. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much uh, fresh fruits and vegetables for you, buddy. And, uh, and meats. Drug-to-drug uh, -drug interactions with MAOIs, uh, multiple prescribed and over-the-counter medications can be potentially lethal. Uh, serotonin syndrome with SSRIs and many others. And this is one of the reasons why uh, if you're taking an MAOI, you need to be really careful as to anything that you put in your body because you could have a, a reaction. Available for formulations, uh, Nardil, Marplan, and Parnate. Uh, similar medications, uh, Eldapril, uh, which is a celagiline patch. Uh, celagiline is used to treat Parkinson's symptoms. Uh, selected B inhibitor at low doses, so restrictions not critical. At higher doses, acts like a typical MAOI, and so there is need for restrictions. Recently available as transdermal patch MSAM uh, to treat depression and not needing uh, food restrictions at low dose, although still drug interactions, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, reversible selective A inhibitors are available in the United States with no restrictions. So the, the doses, the MAOI uh, doses are so low that sometimes you will not have a reaction, it, but it all depends on the dosage. Mood stabilizers uh, are used to treat bipolar disorder. Uh, many mood stabilizers are used to treat various seizure disorder types, uh, migraines, chronic pain syndromes, aggression, impulsivity, augmentation of antidepressants and antipsychotics. Other classes of meds are also used in bipolar treatment, uh, usually in combination with mood stabilizers. Mood stabilizers are used in the treatment of acute mania, versus uh, also pro prophylaxis, it's used as a prophylactic uh, to treat uh, the mania and depression. Uh, so you would take the mood stabilizers to keep from, uh, from uh, developing uh, your mania. Uh, older mood stabilizers, uh, lithium, carbamazepine, and uh, valproic acid. Uh, carbamazepine and, and valproic acids are anti-seizure uh, medications anti-convulsants. Uh, 1949, lithium was recognized as an anti-manic. Uh, 1949, lithium toxicity, identified after being used as a substitute for sodium and salt. As weird as that sounds, they were going to, to treat everybody for bipolar disorder by, making, by putting it in salt. Uh, 1966, French researchers demonstrate valproate's uh, efficiency uh, efficacy in treating mania. Uh, significant 1978 uh, significant studies demonstrate lithium's efficacy in bipolar disorder. 1980 studies demonstrate effectiveness of carbamazepine in bipolar disorder. Um, so what happened? The, the reality is that uh, back in the 60s and 70s um, there wasn't as Bipolar disorder wasn't as readily um, diagnosed as it is today. Uh, people were, who had had a manic episode uh, thought it was great, <laughs> and so they weren't seeking treatment. Uh, but with time, of course, and as people are living longer uh, than uh, we have uh, needed uh, to uh, develop uh, medications that control all of these things. And one of the things we discovered, 1966, a French study, uh, discovered that uh, uh, valproic acid uh, actually tr uh, treated uh, uh, mania. It, it reduced mania. And then they discovered the same thing about carbamazepine in, in 1980. And then they started looking at anticonvulsants as uh, a treatment for bipolar disorder. Uh, lithium is the only mood stabilizer without significant anticonvulsant properties, uh, up to 70% response rate 
uh, with uh, lithium. Uh, lithium has demonstrated effectiveness in reducing suicidality, uh, less effective in rapid cycling in mixed bipolar states. Uh, full clinical effect may take up to one to two months. Uh, serum levels uh, guide dosing, do dosing, and for this reason, if somebody is taking, it's a heavy metal, uh, at, well, obviously, if you can make salt out of it, it's a heavy metal. Uh, so one of the things you have to do is make sure that they're not getting a lethal dosage in their system because it is a heavy metal. It, it, it is retained by your body. Um, so uh, one of the things you have to do is, uh, is uh, monitor the uh, serum level, monitor the lithium level in your body. It's excreted through the kidneys. Uh, it has min minimal liver-mediated drug-to-drug interactions. Um, side effects, uh, fine tremors, weight gain, and nausea, uh, increased thirst and urination, uh, more severe toxicities include coarse tremors, gait instability, vomiting, diarrhea, and confusion. And of course, if this happened uh, to you, if you started having uh, severe, if you started accumulating it in your system, they would just uh, uh, stop giving you the lithium and, and start giving you uh, other medications that would control your bipolar disorder. Increased risk of toxicity with fluid or salt re restriction, uh, hot weather sweating, use of anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, ACE inhibitors and an angiotensin, uh, receptor blockers and diuretics. Uh, this is really serious uh, if you uh, bodybuilders, of course. One of the things that bodybuilders have to do before they... One of the things that bodybuilders have to do is uh, they try to drain their body of, of fluid so that you can see their muscles better. Uh, this is when they're, uh, you know, they're having a, uh, a pose down or whatever. Uh, anyway, th so this is, this is uh, really dangerous. So anytime you're taking lithium you, in bad hot weather, you need to stay out of the hot weather. Uh, if you're taking anti-inflammatory drugs such as... Uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, ibuprofen, uh, you're taking a, uh, uh, you're taking a diuretic, which sucks the, the fluid out of you, you know, you can't do that. You need to make sure that you're, you're not, you're, you're completely hydrated. It may cause kidney and thyroid dysfunction, so there is a need for, uh, regular monitoring, uh, monitoring of your urinary, uh, your urinary output uh, uh, test, blood test. Creatinine is one of them. Uh, blood urea nitrogen, DUN, is another. TSH, of course, is for your thyroid. Females are at a much greater risk of lithium-related uh, thyroid dysfunction, uh, so that is something that you have to remember. Carbamazepine, or uh, also known as Tegretol, it's used as an uh, acute mania and bipolar maintenance. It's more effective than lithium in rapid cycling in mixed states. Uh, it's less effective in bipolar-related depression. Uh, serum levels can be helpful in guiding dosing. Multiple significant drug-to-drug -drug interactions affecting both other medications, uh, reducing their levels and other medications affecting it, increasing the carbamazepine level. Uh, so one of the things that usually happens uh, is... Uh, you don't just take uh, Tegretol for, as a mood stabilizer. You take something else with it. Uh, so if you take uh, carbamazepine, you, you, you'll also take valproic acid. Uh, and the two are used uh, in, in tandem. And then they, you, they uh, actually work to control somebody's bipolar, their manic phases anyway. It induces its uh, own metabolism, so it may need to, to adjust the dose over several weeks. Uh, usually this is done um, with, uh, with weekly blood draws. The side effects of carbamazepine, uh, gastrointestinal problems, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, appetite loss, uh, central nervous system uh, effects, sedation, dizziness, unsteadiness, and confusion. Uh, benign rashes are common. Uh, catastrophic uh, rashes do occur, uh, but it's very rare. Uh, many possible serious abnormalities in the uh, complete blood count. Uh, they're looking at the red cells, they're looking at the white cells, and the uh, uh, 
platelets. Uh, they may it may reduce your sodium levels uh, and cause hyponatremia, um, liver function abnormalities are rare but possible. Uh, toxic metabolites, uh, 10, 10, 11, uh, carbamazepine epoxide uh, can create problems via drug-to-drug -drug interactions, uh, especially with, uh, with, in, with any of the other uh, mood stabilizers like valproate, lem lamatrogene, and phenobarbital. It's independent of carbamazepine levels and can be checked separately. Valproic acid, or also known as Depakote, so we have Tegretol and uh, Depakote or Valproate. Uh, this is the other old mood stabilizer. It's the old anticonvulsant. Uh, it can be dosed rapidly to treat acute mania. Uh, it is more effective than lithium in rapid cycling in mixed states. Uh, it is used by some to treat aggression and impulsivity and other psychiatric disorders. It is approved for migraine prophylaxis. Uh, serum levels can be helpful in guiding dosing. Uh, it's commonly used at top or above levels uh, stated for seizure control. Some suggest supplementation with uh, carnitine, selenium, and others to reduce the side effects. And of course, uh, these are heavy metals, carnitine and selenium. Uh, valproic acid, the side effects, nausea, weight gain, unsteadiness, ataxia, hair loss, and tremors, uh, liver dysfunction, decreased platelets, also known as thrombocytopenia, uh, pancreatitis is rare but potentially serious, polycystic ovary disease suggested by some reports, uh, ammonia levels can be increased particularly in those uh, rare individuals with genetic met metabolic uh, deficits. Drug-to-drug uh, -drug interactions may, uh, by various mechanisms with numerous other anticonvulsants, aspirin, and others. Uh, the newer mood stabilizers, lamatrogene, oxycarbazepine, uh, and topramate, uh, levatracetum, and zonasamide, uh, these are things that have uh, been developed since I was working in medicine, uh, lamatrogene, uh, in the 19, well, yeah, I, I got out of medicine in, in about 2000, uh, but I didn't really see any of these anticonvulsants. Lamatrogene was, uh, in the 1990s, lamatrogene investigated for mood stabilizing properties after patients on it for seizure disorders reported benefits. In the 1990s, uh, the most, most newer approved anticonvulsants are investigated for mood stabilizing properties. In 2003, lamatrogene was approved for bipolar one maintenance. Uh, lamatrogene is also known as lamictal. Uh, it's minimally sedating and like most other mood stabilizers, uh, which is one of the complaints. Uh, so the anticonvulsants make people sleepy uh, so it has a sedating effect, but not lamatrogene, and that's one of the reasons why lamatrogene is uh, so widely used. It appears to be especially effective in treated uh, bipolar depression, but unproven to treat mania. Early use as an anticonvulsant in children raised concerns about potentially life-threatening rash. Uh, this is known as Stevens-Johnson syndrome or toxic uh, epidermal necro necrolysis. Um, necrolysis means that the skin is dying. Uh, initiating lamatrogene is done very slowly to decrease rash risk. Valproate uh, greatly increases lamatrogene levels. Carbamazepine greatly decreases lamatrogene levels. So you need to be aware of what other uh, mood stabilizers the individual is taking. Trileptol, uh, oxcarbazepine, uh, is used primarily in combination with other mood stabilizers, although efficacy not clearly substantiated. It was modified, it modified car carbamazepine with potentially less side effects in drug-to-drug -drug interactions uh, than carbamazepine. 1011 uh, carbamazepine epoxide, not a metabolite, so higher dose required if switching from carbamazepine. Uh, Topamax or Topramate, uh, research questions, its use as a mood stabilizer, although scattered reports suggest possible benefit. Uh, the problem with uh, to to Topamax 
uh, weight loss, cognitive uh, dulling, uh, kidney stones, and metabolic acidosis. Kepra or Levacrocetum, uh, efficacy in bipolar disorder unsubstantiated, although scattered reports suggest possible benefit. Uh, minimal drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Uh, Zonagran, uh, zonisamide, zonisamide uh, efficacy in bipolar disorder unsubstantiated, although scattered reports suggest possible benefit. Uh, side effects similar to topramate include uh, weight loss. Symbiax or olanzapine fluoxetine combination uh, is approved to treat bipolar depression. Uh, older antipsychotic, now we're going to talk about antipsychotics. That was uh, mood stabilizers. Now we're going to talk about antipsychotics. In 1950, of course, the, the reason that people get got into psychology, the reason that we focused on, uh, on uh, problems that people were having, was because we had no way of, of dealing with uh, people that had uh, uh, people that had uh, schizophrenia. So initially, uh, you know, people got into psychology uh, to deal with uh, with these really serious problems. Depression is a problem. Anxiety is a problem. But schizophrenia is something that that nobody had uh, any way of controlling. Uh, so we've been looking for an antipsychotic for an extended length of time. The MAOIs were uh, MAOIs were the antipsychotic. That's the tricyclics that they were looking. I'm sorry, they were uh, an uh, anti-tuberculosis drug. The tricyclics were developed as an antipsychotic drug. Didn't work. You know, we've been looking for something that works for a really, really long time. So. Uh, finally, in the in the nineteen in nineteen fifties, chlorpromazine was synthesized, and uh, it was used as a sedating antihistamine. Uh, nineteen fifty two, chlorpromazine uh, was reported to be beneficial in psychosis and mania. This is like the first drug that we found. Uh, before we just had to knock them out. There was not, not a whole lot we could do with them with individuals suffering from schizophrenia. 1953, three first reports of chlor chlorpromazine associated movement disorders. 1958, uh, halperidol was developed. 1962, long acting injectable flufinazine uh, was developed. Uh, 1970, dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia was suggested so that we had ways of uh, dealing with it. Uh, b before 1970, schizophrenia has been around forever, and we've always uh, looked for something uh, that uh, we could deal, that would help us deal with uh, this problem. And uh, we, it took until the 1970s that somebody came up with uh, the dopamine hypothesis. And 2005, uh, Katie trial uh, shows positive outcome for fin. Uh, perfinazine uh, compared to newer antipsychotics. So we're going to talk about the antipsychotics. The older antipsychotics were neuroleptics. Uh, neuroleptic uh, means uh, seize the neuron, referring to the tendency to cause stiffness and other neurologic symptoms. Uh, early methods of dosing would achieve neurolepsis and then back dose back, uh, down to relieve uh, the effect. So they, they made it they made it so that they were um, uh, neuroleptic. They, they couldn't move, and then they would back them down until they found a dosage that still worked to control them, but at the same time allowed them to move. So we're using tranquilizers. Uh, major tranquilizers refers to the tendency to sedate quiet and create a blandness in patients, similar to the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, differentiates from the uh, benzodiazepines such as Valium, uh, which were referred to as minor tranquilizers. So in order to control the, uh, to the uh, individual suffering from psychosis, uh, we used major, major tranquilizers. We didn't uh, use the minor tranquilizers on those individuals. Uh, typical traditional conventional antipsychotics uh, differentiates these drugs from newer, newer atypical antipsychotics. 
uh, dopamine receptor antagonist uh, highlights strong dopamine activity and tight binding at D2 receptors. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The side effect terminology, extrapyramidal symptoms, uh, extrapyramidal symptom uh, responsible for voluntary movement, extrapyramidal system responsible for involuntary muscle action. It includes dystonias, Parkinson Parkinsonism, uh, akathisia, and tardive dyskinesia. Um, acute, uh, acute <laughs> dystonia is sustained muscular contraction of neck, eyes, and throat. Uh, generally, it occurs soon after starting the, the medication. Uh, ac akathisia is uncontrollable continuous motor restlessness. Uh, it can occur any time in treatment, but generally in the first weeks. Easily, it's easily misdiagnosed as underlying psychiatric disorders. Parkinsonism, uh, tremor muscle stiffness, slowed movement, drooling, uh, generally occurs beyond one week after starting medication. Uh, tardive dyskinesia, spastic facial distortions and tongue movements that may extend to neck, trunk, and extremities. Uh, delayed effect, usually beyond six months from starting medication. Uh, risk increases with duration of exposure to antipsychotics. Uh, it's known to occur without antipsychotic therapy. It may be permanent, occur in discontinuation, or resolve on its own. It is worsened by medications used to treat other uh, extrapyramidal symptoms. Uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, uh, pipe-like rigidity, fever, tremor, altered uh, level of consciousness, uh, hypotension, tachycardia, laboratory abnormalities, elevated white cells, and uh, CK. CK is creatinine kinase. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> it, it has to do with, with tightening up, up your muscles. So if somebody punched you in the arm, you'd have an elevated CK level. Uh, we used to use it to uh, diagnose heart attacks because the heart is a muscle, and if there was heart damage, then the CK level would be elevated. But it has to do with muscles. It has to do with uh, muscle damage, actually. Uh, mortality, uh, 10 to 20 percent, neuroleptic malignant syndrome we're talking about. It can occur any time in course of treatment. Um, anticholinergic effects, dry mouth, blurred vision constipation, urinary retention, mitriasis, or dilated pupils. Okay, so the, the whole deal is antipsychotics uh, cause a lot of problems, uh, potentially cause a lot of problems. It's the reason, this is the reason we need to understand what side effects they uh, possibly cause, because, because some of them actually do cause all of these problems. Methods of classification, clinical effect, potency, uh, low potency, chlorpromazine, uh, uh, mesoridazine, uh, thyroridazine, uh, medium high sedation, low medium extrapyramidal symptoms, high anticholinergic effects, medium potency, uh, ferfinazine, uh, loxapine, and molindone low medium sedation, high extrapyramidal symptoms, low to medium cholinergic effects, high potency, and these are the ones that really knock you out, uh, flufinazine, uh, trifluoperazine, thiophysine, and haloperidol, uh, pimazide. These have medium to low sedation, high extrapyramidal symptoms, and low anticholinergic effects. Chlorpromazine, also known as Thorazine, uh, has a cardiac risk and a weight gain. Flufinazine, uh, prolixi prolixin, uh, as long-acting inject injection is available. Halperidol, also known as Haldol, uh, long-acting injection uh, available. And that's usually, if you see somebody that's having a, some kind of a, a reaction, usually uh, what they hit them with is a shot of uh, hal haloperidol. Loxapine or loxetane uh, is another one. Uh, meso mesordiazine or serentil uh, has cardiac risks. Uh, melindone or moban. Uh, paraf paraffinazine. 
also known as trilophon. Pimazide uh, or ORAP uh, has cardiac risk. Um, Thyroidizine or melaril uh, has high cardiac risk. Uh, thiothiazine or navane uh, is another one, and stelazine is another one. Trifluoperazine. These are all the older antipsychotics, and I've heard of some of these. And but of course, we used to call them melaril, thorazine, uh, serentil, uh, moban, uh, stelazine. These are the older ones. Of course, like I said, I haven't worked in medicine since uh, uh, 2001. Uh, so, you know, these are these the, the older antipsychotics I've worked with, but uh, none of the newer ones. The newer antipsychotics, uh, 1990, clozapine uh, introduced in the United States after long delay related to safety concerns. Uh, 1994, risperidone. Uh, 1996, olanzapine. Uh, 1997, quetiapine, uh, 2000s, prazodone, uh, 2003, riprazole, uh, and 2004, ADA, APA. Uh, consensus report on obesity and diabetes and those taking antipsychotics. This is something, if you ever work with uh, people that are suffering from schizophrenia, uh, if they take their medication, they turn into, uh, they gain a lot of weight, uh, they lose their muscle tone, and a lot of them develop diabetes, uh, which is, is really unfortunate. But it has to do with the medication that they're taking. Uh, terminology atypical antipsychotics, second generation antipsychotics, serotonin dopamine antagonists. Uh, this is uh, the new generation of antipsychotics. Uh, the mechanism it adds serotonin uh, activity. Uh, it binds more loosely to dopamine receptors. Uh, clozapine initially rejected as an antipsychotic because of its seemingly reduced dopamine impact and lack, lack of EPS. Uh, indications and uses, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, acute bipolar uh, mania and maintenance, augmentation of antidepressants and mood stabilizers, aggression and impulsivity. So they were using these newer antipsychotics to treat uh, uh, aggression, overly aggressive people. The features, less risk of EPS movement disorders, uh, greater effect on negative symptoms of schizophrenia, uh, the cautions, uh, greater risk of obesity, diabetes, and lipid abnormalities, uh, clozapine effects, olanzapine effects, uh, quetiapine, risperidone effects, zeprasidone, and aripiprazole. So mixing the antipsychotics, really bad idea. It requires regular monitoring of metabolic par uh, parameters, uh, potential stroke, mortality risk in elderly. If somebody doesn't react to something, uh, a lot of doctors will just try to add a new medication to see if the, the two together will, will take care of the symptoms. Uh, it, we're, and it works most of the time, uh, but sometimes it's not a very good idea to mix some of these things. EPS movement disorders and NMS uh, all can still occur, although much less than atypical antipsychotics. Uh, the newer antipsychotics, Abilify, you've probably seen uh, commercials on television about Abilify. Uh, Apropriazole, uh, it has unique complex, it's a unique complex mechanism, can be either activating or sedating. Uh, but it causes nausea. Uh, clozapine or clozaril uh, is the most effective antipsychotic. It's, there's a risk of agranulocytosis, which is uh, decreased uh, neutrophilic WBCs. Uh, agranulos the neutrophils uh, uh, fight bacterial infections. Uh, lymphocytes fat, uh, fight viral infections. But neutrophils fight bacterial infections. So if it decreases your neutrophils, then potentially uh, strep throat, uh, beta strep group A, um, uh, staph aureus, um, the uh, uh, bacteria that, uh, that cause food poisoning, all of these are bacteria uh, that uh, you need your neutrophils to fight. So you would be more 
susceptible to a bacterial infection. Uh, and of course, one of the things you have to do is, is take a CBC, which, which looks at your white blood cells. It also looks for anemia. <clears throat> Uh, so you need to do this for, uh, weekly for six months, bi-weekly for six months, then monthly, uh, just to make sure that clozapine isn't affecting your uh, immune system. Multiple other side effects and direct drug-to-drug uh, uh, -drug interactions. Uh, levels are reduced by smoking, so people that... And, and part of the problem, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever been around uh, people that are suffering from schizophrenia, uh, but uh, nicotine increases your dopamine level. And dopamine, one of the problems that uh, people with schizophrenia tend to have is that uh, their dopamine level is, uh, is decreased. So they chain smoke, uh, and that controls their symptoms. Uh, but of course, if you take clozapine, you can't smoke. Olanzapine or Zyprexa, Zytus, uh, significant weight, diabetes, and lipid abnormality risk, uh, and the levels are reduced, of course, by smoking. Uh, Seroquel, uh, quetiapine, uh, as approved uh, dose range considered low by many. It has low a EPS risk. It's used commonly as a sedating agent. Respiridone or Respiridol. Uh, is, mo is most like uh, typical antipsychotics at higher doses. It's available in long-acting injection known as Consta. Zeprasidone or Geodon uh, is approved dose range considered uh, low by many. Initial cardiac concerns appear insignificant for most. Must be taken with fat-containing meal or snack. Okay, these are the anticholinergics. Uh, Bins Benztropine, wait a minute, what are we talking about here? Oh, these are the anticholinergics. A priprazole, a bilifo no, that's not right, wait a minute. Uh, anticholinergics. Benztropine uh, congentin is least sedating, most commonly used. The pyridon is a kenton. Uh, Benadryl is an anti is a um, antihistamine. Uh, Artane uh, Simitrel is not an a, uh, anti uh, is not an anticholinergic. It's used rarely to treat EPS. It treats extrapyramidal symptoms. Amantadine, uh, tremor, stiffness, drooling, dystonias, uh, akathisia may not respond to anticholinergics. Uh, tardive dyskinesia. May be, may be worsened with anticholinergics, dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision. Uh, EPS uh, thought to be cholinergic uh, dopamine imbalance. Uh, the benzodiazepines, uh, the first benzodiazepine that we found was uh, Librium uh, chlordiazepoxide. Uh, in the 1970s, Valium diazepam uh, became the top selling drug in the United States because of its anti anxiety properties. Uh, 1986, Xanax took over the top selling drug in the United States, Alprazolam. Uh, 1990s, SSRIs replaced some of the chronic uh, benzodiazepine used for anxiety. They started using SSRIs instead of Va Xanax and Valium. There's a sedating effect, and it kind of knocks you out a little bit, makes you tired all the time. Uh, and SSRIs don't have that uh, side effect. So in the 1990s, SSRIs took over. Uh, the most popular drug in the world right now is Viagra. Uh, you can figure that one out on your own if you like. Benzodiazepines, general characteristics, uh, they differ in action, duration, drug uh, to drug interactions, and side effects based on differences in absorption rates lipid solubility, and metabolism. Indications or uses include anxiety disorder, panic disorder, ma mania, uh, seizure disorder, phobias, insomnia, alcohol withdrawal, muscle spasm, agitation, catatonia, and akathisia. Uh, hospital use, uh, you, can, uh, you can give it to people in an IV or, or you can give it intermuscularly uh, in sedation for procedures, and that's usually what uh, Valium is used for. Side effects, sedation, cognitive impairment, uh, anterograde amnesia, uh, re respiratory depression, 
at high dose or with alcohol, it may worsen obstructive uh, sleep apnea symptoms in susceptible individuals. Abuse and dependence of benzodiazepines. Uh, risk of abuse is small in individuals who are not abusing other substances. Uh, withdrawal symptoms and physical dependence are not in, uh, in uh, themselves problematic if reductions are done gradually to minimize symptoms. Use of longer acting agents to minimize between dose breakthrough and avoiding taken as needed dosing are helpful. Symptoms of withdrawal may represent breakthrough of the underlying anxiety disorder. Uh, needing to increase a dose tolerance, not generally an issue at therapeutic doses. These are the benzodiazepines. Uh, Alprazolam, uh, also known as Xanax, is a short to mid um, uh, acting. Uh, it lasts for the a short period of time uh, to, to a medium period of time. Uh, chlor chlordiazepoxide, also known as Librium, is a long-acting benzodiazepine. Uh, clonopin or clonazepam, uh, mid to long. Uh, it has serotonergic uh, properties and increases your serotonin level. Uh, chlorazepam Pate or transine is a long-acting benzodiazepine. Valium diazepam is a long-acting. Uh, uh, Estazolam or Prosom uh, is a mid-acting um, benzodiazepine. Florazepam dalamane uh, is a long-acting uh, Ativan. Uh, you've probably heard of Ativan. Lorazepam uh, is a short to mid. Uh, Cirax or Oxazepam, uh, short to mid uh, also. Uh, Temazepam, uh, Restoril, uh, mid uh, acting benzodiazepine. And Trazolam, Halcyon, is a short acting. Um, Ativan, uh, Cirax, and Restoril have minimum drug to drug interactions, whereas the other benzodiazepines, uh, you need to be really careful when you take them. Other anxiolytics or hypnotics, uh, chloral hydrate was first used in 1969. Uh, Ambien was approved in 1992 as a sleep aid. Uh, in uh, 2006, Ambien uh, became a generic, or at least they allowed generics to hit the market. Hypnotics are medications that induce sleep. Uh, Non-benzodiazepine anxiolytics uh, include bis, uh, buspirone and the antihistamines. Uh, the newer anticonvulsants are used off-label as both anxiolytics and hypnotics, although e efficacy is unproven. Trazodone and some tricyclic antidepressants are used as hypnotics. Uh, newer hypnotics active, uh, are active at the GABA1 receptor except rem remelation. Remelation. Oops. Uh, miscellaneous uh, boost bar is a subtle anxiolytic and a, has a slow response. Uh, chloral hydrate, uh, also known as Noctec, is a hypnotic. Uh, rapid tolerance, toxicity, and overdose. Uh, you need to be really careful of chloral hydrate. It is four molecules of alcohol. Uh, they used to use it uh, to knock people out, uh, to Shanghai them, to, uh, not as a date rate drug. The person is, is completely unresponsive. Uh, antihistamines, hydroxine, uh, pamo pamoate, uh, Vistaril, and of course Benadryl, diphenhydramine is uh, Benadryl, or the antihistamines. The anticonvulsants, mildly sedating and calming. Uh, Neurontin, Lyrica, and uh, Gab Gabitril, uh, and I won't read their chemical names. Selective benzodiazepine receptor activity, GB GAB1 receptor site, uh, hypnotics. Uh, Lunesta is a long-term use uh, approval. Sonata is a short has a short half-life, and z then Ambien. Melatonin receptor agonists, uh, Resoram or Rameltion uh, to help people sleep.
Stimulants and ADHD drugs, uh, Ritalin was approved in 1956. 10% uh, of 10-year-old uh, boys in the United States are on stimulants. 2.5 million children in the United States are on stimulants. Uh, recent FDA warning about increased cardiovascular risk, sudden death for patients on stimulants. And we have seen this in athletes. Uh, sometimes we, uh, we see an individual that has been, uh, has suffered from ADHD who became an athlete. Uh, later on in life, uh, they have a cardiac problem even in their 20s and 30s. There was an individual that played for the Danish uh, soccer team who collapsed on the field, and this is the reason why. Automoxetine, uh, Stratera, uh, is a non-stimulant uh, treatment for ADHD. It's a recent caution about suicidal ideation, which is always a problem. Uh, has rare liver function impairment. Uh, Catapress or clonidine, as an antihypertensive uh, alpha-2 agonist. It's used for ADHD, substance uh, withdrawal, Tourette syndrome, and other problems. Uh, Silert or pimeline uh, is rarely used stimulant to, due to liver toxicity. And of course, you need to be careful what they're giving you. Uh, dexedrine, dextroamphetamine has multiple uh, long-acting forms. Insomnia, headache, tremors, exacerbation of tics, uh, nausea, weight loss, blurred vision, overstimulation. Uh, methylphenidate, uh, Ritalin, it has some reactions as dextroamphetamines. Uh, modafinil or Provigil, modafinil is a non-stimulant. It's poorly understood mechanism of action. Uh, it's used for sleepiness uh, related to narcolepsy. Uh, obstructive sleep, apnea, uh, depression, multiple sclerosis. Uh, it's used, used for ADHD be, is being in, investigated. <clears throat> Medications for dementia, uh, 1993 Cognex, uh, Tacrine was approved. Uh, I was working in medicine, I was in, actually working in Oklahoma at the time, and I can remember when this thing came out, uh, Cognex came out. Uh, wow, um, everybody wanted it. Um, all, all the people who had dementia or were uh, had uh, Alzheimer's disease, they wanted the Cognex to see if they, it could make them their memory improve. But of course, it doesn't do that. Uh, 1996, Aricep uh, Dinazepezil uh, was approved. 1997, generalizability of approval studies was questioned. Uh, 19, uh, 2003, Naminda uh, was approved for moderate to severe Alzheimer's dementia. 2004, a detailed British study questions the effic efficacy of cholinesterase inhibitors. And there we go. General characteristics of the medications for dementia. The search for a treatment for Alzheimer's dementia is driven by intense human suffering and immense demographic numbers. The studies that support uh, use of these medications generally find subtle benefit or slowing of decline. There is significant debate about the benefit versus the cost, money, and side effects of using these medications. Treatment for, for behavioral issues and dementia has been complicated by FDA warnings about the risk of using antipsychotics uh, in the elderly. Cholinesterase inhibitors address uh, one theorized mechanism of this complex disease. Uh, Donazepel, Aricept, uh, Raminil, uh, Exelon, uh, Cognex rarely are used due to liver toxicity. Uh, so uh, the question is, do you want to... Of course, uh, Alzheimer's disease is a terminal illness. If you blow out their liver, is it, are you accelerating... Are you uh, reducing the number of years that they're going to be able to stay alive? Naminda has a complex activity uh, via the NMDA, the glutamate-mediated receptor. It may have more broad psychiatric applications, but we're not sure at this point. Use of medications and substance abuse uh, to treat withdrawal symptoms, benzodiazepines, anticonvulsants, and clonidine, uh, to treat uh, comorbid psychiatric disorders, uh, anxiety and depression are common. 
SSRIs, mood stabilizers, and benzodiazepines uh, to prevent relapse, uh, deterrence, and craving control. Disulfiram uh, antabuse is a deterrent. Uh, it requires motivated patients. Uh, if you drink, if you take antabuse, uh, it uh, makes you vomit. If you drink alcohol, if you take this drug, um, <laughs> I have an ugly story about it. Uh, there was a lady who wanted her, her husband. She was having problems with her husband. He was going out and getting drunk every night. And then he came back and. Of course, by morning he was okay. He was okay enough to go to work, but he his work was suffering. Uh, so she went to the doctor and she talked him into giving her an abuse to give to this guy. She couldn't get him to agree to take it, so she would slip it in his drink. And of course, he'd go to the bar and then he'd get drunk, or he would drink alcohol and he'd immediately start vomiting. And of course, when he found when he figured out what was going on, he went to the doctor and there was a big stink about it. Uh, anyway, they kicked him out of the service. As it turned out, uh, they kicked him out of the service. But, uh, you know, he ruined his, his Air Force, his military career. But she probably shouldn't have done that. And it was fairly unethical for the doctor to give her an abuse to slip to this guy. Uh, Camprol is a craving con ha uh, has craving control, minimal drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Efficacy shown in some studies with more severe alcoholics, although other studies question its efficacy. Naltrexone or Revia uh, is an opioid antagonist. It has a high response uh, for, for placebo cause, uh, some to question study design, uh, potential liver toxicity. Vivitrol is an injectable naltrexone that lasts for 30 days. Bupronifene, uh, naloxone, also known as suboxone, is a treatment for opioid dependence. It contains both an, anti an agonist and an antagonist. Uh, bupro bu bupropion, uh, also known as Zyban, is identical to Wellbutrin. It treats nicotine craving. Uh, others, there are other several uh, uh, anticonvulsants, topramates, uh, has been used for craving reduction. Uh, the uses of these drugs are off-label and carry additional potential side effects from their cardiovascular actions. These are the uh, uh, heart drugs. Uh, potential psychiatric benefits uh, have often been discovered while these agents were used for their primary indication. They, uh, you have to monitor their blood pressure because it lowers their blood pressure. That's their job. Uh, and these are the, uh, the anti-hypertensives, uh, alpha adrenergic agonists, uh, clonidine, guanafacine, and prazosin. It's used in ADHD and Tourette's syndrome, PTSD. Uh, prazosin is found helpful in reducing PTSD-related nightmares. Uh, the beta blockers, propranol, uh, enderol, is used uh, for akathisia, lithium-induced tremors, performance and anxiety and aggressive behavior. Uh, Pendolol uh, has been considered for antidepressant augmentation, uh, multiple drug-to-drug -drug interactions, and this is a problem. Uh, avoid, and if somebody has asthma, uh, if a diabetic is on insulin, they can't use a beta blocker, and certain cardiovascular diseases Calcium channel blockers, ditalziam, uh, verapamil, and nimidipine. Uh, I'm on verapamil uh, because I have uh, high blood pressure. It may be helpful as an additional agent in bipolar maintenance, uh, multiple drug-to-drug -drug interactions and precautions, and for this reason, you need to be careful as to what you're taking, and that is the end of that. Stop.